looking at the technological advances. I used to be on dial up looking for. Welcome to Three Count Commentary. So I guess we got to talk about Heels, the TV show from Stars. So episode one just aired, and uh, I took some notes so we can sit down and discuss it. Um, and uh, here's my—I want to give my overall. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a breakdown of the episode. I'm not gonna do a beat by beat complete breakdown. Just some things that I noticed. All right. So overall, I think the show is fine i don't think it's great i just think it's kind of fine you could tell that the show was made from stories that um various people have been told about how the wrestling business works and about wrestlers and about the fans and all that kind of stuff uh it (laughs) it tried to show how they did some intricate uh (laughs) research about how to do an elbow drop or uh (laughs) why do you maintain kayfabe even though everybody knows it's not real, you know, that kind of, that kind of stuff. But the show is essentially about the Duffy Wrestling League, which is a, a small town wrestling organization in Duffy, Georgia. It's very country, they're country folk, and um, it's an oldie, old time promotion. They even have a leaky building, just like, you know, you've probably heard about the Sportatorium being a complete toilet, or um, some of the other arenas that were really small time and, and janky. Uh, the main characters consist of Jack Spade, um, one of the, in the Spade wrestling family, you know, the Spade wrestling family runs this, the Duffy promotion, which is typical of pro wrestling. You have a small family that runs the promotion. Jack Spade is the older brother. Ace Spade is the younger brother. Jack is the heel and he is the champion. He's also the booker, but they have him writing scripts on the show. I know that's people are not going to like that. But he's writing the scripts and coming up with the finishes and basically booking everybody on the show. And Ace is essentially, they're, they're doing it, telling the story with Ace that the baby face is the real heel. We'll get more into that in a second. So then it has all this cast of characters like Big Jim and Cottonmouth. Big Jim is like big tall guy. Cottonmouth is like big fat Mexican that wears a luchador's mask. There's two black guys. I don't remember what their names were. Uh, they're... Uh, What's the name? Uh, Ace has a valet named Crystal. I don't know what her valet name is. Um, of course, her and Ace are fucking. They were fucking in the locker room. <laughs> you know, okay. Um, that kind of thing. So, there's also Wild Bill. Wild Bill is the old opponent of their father who who wrestled under the name King, um, King Spade. Um, their father is dead. Had left Jack the promotion. Or left the brothers the promotion. Jack is running it. And it's a... It's a it's kind of a power game where Ace is the beloved baby face, but Jack is the the guy who actually cares about the promotion. And this is where you get the most of the schism in the first episode. You you show they show they do a really good job of showing that Jack cares about everything and everybody. Um, Jack is worried about the building leaking. He's worried about the fog machines working. He's worried about you know how everything works out with the fans. You know, to make sure that the fans have something to grab onto for the next uh, show. Um, how to finish without killing each individual guy, killing their heat or whatever. And uh, he's really worried about the individuals. And he's worried about everything. Even though he's playing the heel, he's really the baby face. He's concerned about how everything looks. And he actually goes to church and all this kind of stuff. While you have Ace, who is uh, pissing on the church trees. He's uh, doing drugs. He's banging ring rats in the locker room. He refuses to go to the merch table because he's upset. And of course, he just wants to be the champion. And all of his ideas are basically like Bruce Pritchard said, Harco Holly, how about I beat you and win the belt? You know, that kind of thing. Um, So he's basically a selfish prick. And uh, that's basically the dichotomy of the show. The show is about how these two guys try to coexist when they really shouldn't be in the same place. And near the, near the mid part of the episode, Wild Bill appears and Wild Bill is coming with the big news that Ace has an opportunity to go to a developmental program, that he's going to finally leave Duffy and he's going to go to a developmental program. And Jack is against it. Jack says, you know, Ace is not ready. He's not he's not good enough yet. Um, but of course, they're just concerned that he'll leave and never come back. And he's top babyface. So if he leaves, they have to build a new top babyface and all that kind of stuff. 
And so, Wild Bill, of course, being the shit stirrer that he is in this movie, he not on, in this show rather. Not only does he give drugs to Ace later in the episode, because of course there's it's a wrestling show, so that means there got to be drugs involved. But he also is the one who starts the schism, starts telling Ace, "Hey, you know, he does. He uses the Bible verse to tell you, you know, that he should be running things and not Jack. And Jack does have a control issue. You know, he's." He's not really listening to other people's ideas. Um, and he has a bit of an ego himself, you know. He doesn't want to get beat. But he also knows that if he gets beat, and cause that's the match that they were building up to is the Ace versus Jack title match. And um, if he gets beat and loses the title, that's instant gratification for the fans. What's next for them? And because Ace doesn't know that there is a rival promotion, or at least he, he, he knows it, he's not too concerned about it. Um, some guy named Charlie Guffey. I believe his name is. Um, he runs a rival promotion. He has a lot more money, um, and he's gonna—he's threatening to put their promotion out of business by running um, opposition to them. And so, uh, Jack is trying to run the promotion in a way to keep people coming week after week after week and growing it. And this is where you kind of get um, Jack getting a little—you see his own ego. Jack has visions of the DWL being a national promotion on national TV. And he thinks that they can do it if they just work really, really, really hard at it. And Wild Bill, when they have this conversation, it's kind of like, dude, you don't understand. This is the shits. This is a small time promotion. It's not going anywhere. You know, you got to give your brother an opportunity to get the hell out of here. And hopefully he'll come, he'll come back and be able to help. And, you know, Jack has a problem with that because Wild Bill actually left. Um, had worked in that territory before, but he had left and he didn't come back. And he's saying, like, okay, well, he's probably not going to be like me, you know, and that kind of thing. So Jack got this big, big brain that he's going to um, eventually be able to pull the promotion from the dregs and the leaky buildings to be in a national promotion. He believes that he can do that. He believes his ideas can do that. And that's why he won't give any control to anyone else. So they set up a lot of really cool dichotomies throughout this thing. Of course, like I said, the DWL is a broke, small, independent promotion. Um, they have not fully in, in, introduced the, the, the rival promotion yet. I'm guessing that's going to be later, but they planted the seed here. That there's going to be a rival promotion in the future. You have the brothers set against each other. You also have a, a, a dichotomy with the women where you have the female promoter. I believe that that's their sister, I think it is, where she can go into the men's locker room. But the valet, Crystal, who is, you know, Ace's valet. And um, she's she wants to be a wrestler or she just wants to be around the boys. And she's constantly told, no, she can't be there and all that kind of stuff. So you see the dichotomy of the women. You also see that. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Jack's wife is not in the business at all. She's just a fan and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so you see all of these dichotomies set up. They do a good job of really showing you all the different oppositional forces um, they also do a, little, a, a decent job of really breaking down um, some storylines. For instance, when uh, you could tell that Jack is a guy who actually studies wrestling, and he takes wrestling very seriously. And he, him, and Big Jim is on the top of this. I think it's the water tower, and they're drinking. And this is you know, he's trying to figure out a finish to the match with him and his brother. His, you know, he's saying, okay. It, his first idea was to beat Ace in a, you know, schmaz finish. He was going to beat him. Ace didn't like that, didn't like that at all. Uh, then Ace came with this idea where he just basically beat the tar out of Jack and, you know, finished him. And then everybody was kind of like, well, that's, you know, what do we do next week? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do we do next time after you beat me and, and you know, super kicked me a hundred times? What, what do we do next? And so he's trying to come up with a, a better idea. And that's the story that they're building. So Jack's next idea is to come up with, and, and he wants to turn this guy Big Jim. He wants to turn Big Jim. He'll have Big Jim interfere or whatever and um, flip Big Jim. Big Jim doesn't want to turn heel. Big Jim likes being a baby face. He says, you know, acting like a better man makes you be a better man. Uh, of course, this is not, we know that this is not true because Ace is a complete and total douchebag. We'll get into that in a moment. Um, so... Uh, 
Ace, well, Jack is trying to explain how this heel turn would work. That it would actually be a, a, a double turn. That he will be turning face, Jim will be turning heel. But Jim is like, no, I'm, I'm not interested. And then Jim drops the ball on him that, you know, he might not be able to do this wrestling thing for much longer because he, had, he you know, he's not making enough money. He might have to work more shifts at, uh, at his regular job. And uh, times is hard. All right, so let's talk about uh, Ace being a complete and total douchebag. Basically, they did a they did if they did a good job of anything on this show, is that keeping up the old the baby faces the real heel uh, mentality? Because Ace is the worst. I mean, he's the guy is stealing, right? He got caught stealing out of the general store. And uh, the chick saw him and said, "Like, oh, Ace, hey, you know, you should. You know, your father would be embarrassed if he saw you doing this." And so he tells this story about the about the girl coming over to the family's house, and you know, their families were friends. It's a small town, so he's telling this story about how he was watching her eat, and she's a fat lady. And he says, "I can just see you eating, and you know, getting fat. You're just scooping." spoonful after spoonful in your mouth it made her feel really really bad about being fat and of course she probably told her dad and who called jack and that's when he decided to come up with the idea of um ace can't win the match you know that's you know i think that was they i don't think it said that but i think that's kind of where we got the idea that jack is not comfortable with ace being the champion and being the front man and then we see that uh, everybody's working the merch table. All the different wrestlers are working the merch table. And the most popular guy in the territory is Ace. And Ace is not working the merch table. He's instead hanging out with Wild Bill um, as Wild Bill drinks and tells him how great he is and how he should be trying to get out of this town. And um, he's just surrounded by people who are trying to make him feel like he's the biggest thing in the world. Crystal, the valet, is another one. She's trying to hitch her wagon to him so she can leave town when he leaves. And she even asks him straight up, you know, are you going to take me with you when you leave town? And uh, so this was, it's part of it is Ace's natural uh, progression of his natural arrogance, his natural um, character. But it's also people feeding them shit, you know, kids running up to him always, you know, flexing their muscles, trying to be like him, want to be like him, all this kind of stuff. It's just really feeding his ego. And uh, this whole thing about the, the baby faces being the real heels. I mean, it's been around forever. I mean, you see it all the time. Now. I mean, probably some of the some of the crazier stories is, you know, the John Cena stuff, how John Cena ruined Alex Riley's career or Tyler Rex's career or, you know, the various other guys who Cena, you know, then you got a Hogan, of course, Hogan. Hogan, you know, that doesn't work for me, brother, and all that kind of stuff. And that that kind of stuff has been around for a long time. That um the the top baby faces or the top baby faces are not are the real heels. They're the they're really the the dirtiest, grimiest, you know, ignorant, meanest guys. And the and the heels are usually the nicer guys. And I've heard it su- suggested that, you know, because heels get to work out of their aggression in the ring that they don't have a lot of it um, in their personal lives. Um, I don't know how true that is, but I can just tell you that people are people. And, um, you know, I get that they're trying to, they're trying to show that, you know, what you are on TV or what you are on screen is not who you really are. And that's kind of like the goal, but you know, you have to figure out that a lot of, a lot of people who say, Oh yeah, Hulk Hogan ruined my career or whatever. A lot of that shit might just be whispers or, you know, people who have problems with other people and, you know, jealousies and different things like that. And uh, there's a little bit of that here, too. Well, you, you actually see Ace being a douchebag, but you don't know how much of that is. Um, when it goes to Jack's ultimate decision, how much of it is because he's jealous of Ace <clears throat> or how much of it is because Ace is really an asshole and it's not going to work out. And so... What did what what was Jack's big plan? So Jack's big plan, he didn't come up with a finish. Or at least they kept teasing that he was going to come up with a finish. And in the match, what they did for the big finish is <laughs> Jack made him submit. Legit. He cinched up on an arm bar and Ace kind of squealed out in pain. And then he told the referee to call. Well, Jack told the referee to call it. Referee rung the bell. And the crowd was pissed. 
crowd was furious. They started throwing popcorn and cups and all kind of stuff. And Ace was embarrassed, um, pissed off, and punched him for real in the face. And um, everybody was like, well, there that go. So we got our double cross. And it was a double cross. Um, because Jack didn't tell anybody to finish. And uh, basically went in there and shot on his brother. And well, part of the reason why he shot on his brother is because right as they were about to go to the ring, Ace, who had been toggling this in his mind all this time, and now he's been <clears throat> now he's been doing drugs, and um, he's been thinking about it. He's like, "Look, I don't care anymore. I just want to get the fuck out of Duffy. I just want to get out of this town." So he says, "You can keep the damn belt." But, you know, you could stay here and, uh, you know, rot and basically until you kill yourself like dad. And they were about to fight. And then as they were about to fight, you know, one of the other wrestlers came in and broke it up. Kind of just hugged him. I don't think he knew he was breaking it up. But he had said something that really pissed Jack off. And so Jack decided to shoot on him in the match and basically do a Montreal screw job. And uh, fucked over Ace. And I was like, okay. It, Almost killing your territory. It sounds like a real smart deal, Jack. <laughs> That's a real smart deal, Jack. Um, I don't see how they're going to get themselves out of that one. But um, it wasn't a bad show. You know, it wasn't terrible. Um, there was some TNA wrestling footage. They used TNA wrestling footage as, you know, the footage for the promotion. Like uh, they did like a YouTube channel or something like that. And uh, it was like Abyss and Samoa Joe on Thumbtacks and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was neat. Um, there was some really neat wrestling stuff in here, but just um, the story of, in and of itself, it looks like it's going to be a little bit better than the wrestler. Like they have a little bit more of a realistic, you know, the wrestler was like depressing. It was like dour as fuck. But, um, and that was felt like uh, it wasn't subversive as far as wrestling was concerned, but it seemed like, you know, Ace becomes Randy the Ram. <laughs> in several years you know like <laughs> if you were to like put those things side by side you could see like a spade in like 20 years being like randy the ram you know but randy the ram it was kind of was like real depressing he was like a sad sack here it was just like you know they don't they aren't sad sacks they just know that they're low on the totem pole and uh, they want to work hard to put on the best show and to get out of town or to move to be able to move it along well, most guys do, you know, Ace just wants to be the man, you know, he just wants to be the star. So it was a solid show. If I had to give it a grade, I'd probably give it a B minus maybe. Um, I'm really interested in how, what the next episode. So they did a good job of hooking me for the next episode with the, with the double cross. Um, so I'm interested. So uh, let me know what you guys think. If you watched it, uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel. Donate to the channel, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.